I bought the first broken OLED Nintendo Switch on eBay. This is what the seller said was wrong. This unit has problems with the right Joy-Con connecting. It was tested to multiple Joy-Cons and the right failed to connect every time. So let's get it opened up, make sure everything's here, and then let's see if we can figure out what's wrong. This video is sponsored by Karma. Karma is an app and Chrome extension that ensures you never miss a price drop or a coupon code. The link in the description will take you right there. Okay. So they did include the Joy-Cons and the dock and basically everything that came with the retail kit. And here is the tablet itself. Oh, I can already see we have different rails. That could be a problem. It's not easy to find parts for these new consoles. So that's gonna be a problem if we have to replace the rails. So the right rail is this one right here. This is the one they say is causing the problem. So we'll inspect that in a minute. I also wanna take a few minutes and just look at the differences between this tablet and the previous version of the Switch. Let's see if it turns on. It does, that's good and low battery. So that didn't actually take too long to charge. So let's check the left Joy-Con. That one works fine. Let's check the right Joy-Con. That one does not work at all. But is it a Joy-Con problem or a Switch problem? Let's try this Joy-Con. Okay, I know this Joy-Con is good and works. At this point, I think it's time to take the back off and have a look at the inside. But before we do that, I wanna tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Karma. As a fixer and a YouTuber, I'm always looking for things like technology. I need to upgrade my TV soon. Recently, I did upgrade one of my TVs and Karma helped me find a great price on it. When I found the TV I liked, I just added it to my list on Karma. And a few days later, Karma emailed me and told me that there was a great deal going on on that same TV. So I was able to get a great price, but I didn't have to spend a bunch of time searching for that TV all over the web every single day. I love that Karma is so easy to use. All you have to do is download the Chrome extension right from the Google Chrome store. You can use Karma at any of your favorite stores. Whenever you see an item you'd like, you can just click right on the Karma button to save it. You can also click and drag the Karma button up and down for your convenience. You can get notifications via email or mobile push when an item you've saved goes on sale, has a relevant coupon, or comes back in stock. I like to keep multiple wish lists of things that I know I'm gonna need in the future. This helps me organize my shopping and also helps me with impulse spending. Now, when you're doing your normal online shopping, Karma scans the web for coupon codes and applies them at checkout automatically. This is a special feature if you use Karma on your computer, so be sure you've got that Chrome extension. And lastly, when you shop from select retail partners, Karma gives cash back to you and to a good cause. If you wanna get Karma's Chrome extension for yourself, I'll leave my link in the description that'll take you right there. Now let's see what's wrong with this right Joy-Con rail on this OLED Switch. This is actually the first time I've taken the OLED Switch apart. So I don't actually know if these screws need to come out yet, but they're gonna need to come out eventually. So I'm just gonna take them out now. Okay, and here we go. So it looks like just these top two screws need to be removed to remove this back plate. One of the things I definitely love about this new model of Switch, the OLED, is this hinge system. It is much more robust than the old style. So this is what the Switch used to have for a kickstand, and now they've updated it to this. This is a really nice and much needed upgrade in my opinion. And now with that back plate off, we get our first look at the inside. We need to remove this metal plate to really see what all's going on under here. And we are in. So we can finally see the guts of the Nintendo OLED. Let's take a quick look at the OLED versus the previous model. So the OLED is on the bottom and the old model is on the top. The first thing we have to mention is the OLED screen size is much bigger than the original screen size. The original had a 6.2 inch LED screen while the OLED has a seven inch organic LED panel. I wish Nintendo would have went ahead and upgraded the battery. I think there's definitely room inside for a larger battery, but unfortunately the battery is exactly the same as with the previous model. In fact, this is an HA HAC003. This is also an HAC003 on the original Switch. A couple other things I noticed is the heat pipe on the new OLED Switch actually is smaller than the heat pipe on the original. The fan itself is also a little bit smaller than the fan on the original. This is the original fan and this is on the OLED. So I think the OLED version must run a little bit cooler or else they wouldn't have been able to make these changes to the cooling system. One of the other obvious changes is the OLED has this integrated game slot that is integrated into this board along with the SD card and then it's somehow attached to the board or the cooling pipe or something. Ah. 
They tried to hide it. We got one more screw right in here. There we go. Now we can remove this piece. This is kind of a strange and interesting way to do this part, but we've got the game slot, the headphone jack, and then the micro SD port on this kind of extra board here. The main boards between the old version, which is this one, and the OLED version are pretty similar as far as just the general shape of it, but the components on the board are pretty different. We still got the battery connection over here, but these little components right here are moved over here, and the main chips on the board, which are located right here on the old version, are kind of moved over to the left in the OLED version. Now here's something pretty interesting. This is the original Switch. USB-C charge port and this is the charge port on the switch OLED You can see there's this metal cover that goes over it. I'm not totally sure what the point of that is Maybe just to help strengthen this actually I think that's probably what it is because there's two screws that would screw down to this cover which would help secure the cover and that would theoretically help this port to stay in here and not be quite as flimsy as this one. These ports on the original Switch have been very abused. I replaced a lot of them. Pretty much any repair shop that fixes these has replaced a ton of these USB-C ports. So then taking a look at the other side of these boards, again, we can see the USB-C port on the original Switch and the port on the Switch OLED. The video chip on the original Switch is a pretty common failure point. And this is the video chip on the OLED switch. It looks pretty similar, actually looks pretty much exactly the same. It's got the same numbers on it even. So I think this is the same chip as this one on the original. And then on the OLED switch, it's got these little filters here. The one on the original switch has much larger filters. So that's a look at the main differences between the original switch and the new OLED switch. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on with this right Joy-Con rail. So the first thing we want to do is just kind of inspect this whole area and see if we can see any problems. I see no liquid damage, so I don't think it's a liquid damage issue. The ribbon cable all looks good. I think what I'm going to do first is just pop up this locking tab right here and unplug and plug this cable back in just to make sure that it's plugged in fully. Cable definitely doesn't look damaged. I don't think that was enough to do anything, but I am gonna turn it over and just see if that happened to work. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens. Nope, nothing. So I think next I'm gonna take this Joy-Con rail off and let's check the little connections down inside of it. See if there's any problems there. So we need to push this little pin through right here. There we go. All right, and I see absolutely no issues there. No issues on the bottom side. I don't see any problems at all. So I'm gonna put this one back together. Now the problem is, if the problem isn't here, that means the problem has to be somewhere else on the switch. So I am actually just gonna put this Joy-Con rail back in just because I don't know what's wrong with it. And it's always possible when you mess around with things that it'll just randomly start working. So let's just give it a try. Oh, okay. So I was pushing on this connector down here and then it made the noise. Let's try it again. Oh, here we go. Did that just fix it? So I'm gonna get this set up, but then I wanna take a closer look at that connector because it makes me nervous that just pushing on the connector seemed to get this thing to work. So I wanna look at that connector on the board and just see if there's something going on there. My worry is that once I'm done with this thing, it's possible in the future that the same problem could show up again. So I wanna just take a look and just make sure that this thing is fully working. So here is that connector. I'm just checking it over to see if there's anything at all obvious that I can see with it. So I wanna check each of these pins. Okay, those four are on there nice and tight. No problems there. Let's check these pins on the front side. Good.
absolutely no problems there. Now the lot, let's check this locking tab. Everything aligns. There should be a pen in each of these little holes right here. And there is. So I don't see any problems there either. One interesting thing that I just noticed is there is this like little metal piece right here. And then there's another over there. I feel like I, it makes me wonder if maybe that had crossed over two of those pins or something. I'm not sure where this piece would have come from though. That is, that's definitely weird. Looking inside this little connector, all these little pins are just right where they should be. I see no problems with this connector. I'm kind of thinking maybe this little, it, what looks like a little metal strip could have caused that problem. Now also, Looking over here, yeah, there's another one right over there. It's kind of stuck to my pick there, but. So what I'm gonna do is actually just clean this whole thing up. I'm gonna use some IPA and then a nice blast of air. Just clean all this up and then we'll get it back installed and just verify that it does still work. I feel much better knowing that this connector is in good shape. There's no bent pins. All the little pins are soldered onto the board correctly. So that makes me feel a lot better I think once we clean it up and put it back together, if it still works then, I think I'm gonna call this one fixed, but I gotta get it clean and then make sure it actually does still work. And that is nice and clean now. Let's get it reassembled and see if it still works. Now I'm gonna test one of the cool features about these new OLED switches. It's got this auto assembly feature where you just kind of throw the board in there and then it just kind of auto assembles itself. So let's try that out now. Okay, gotta get it just right though. No, it's got to kind of sit in there. Let's try that again. And no, come on. There we go. Now I could test it as is, but since I don't know for sure, for sure what the problem was with that right Joy-Con rail, I want to put the rest of it together just to make sure it is all together so we can just test everything all at once and just double check and make sure that everything is working properly. And now with all the screws in, let's see if it's gonna work. Will it still turn on? All right, good news so far. Let's try the left Joy-Con. Good, and the right Joy-Con. And there we go, this OLED Nintendo Switch is all fixed. If you like this video, you'll probably like the video where I tried to fix a broken Animal Crossing Special Edition Nintendo Switch. I'll leave a link for that right up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix it. Be sure to use my link in the description to go check out Karma. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good one.